This is Mrs. Zappia with Lesson 10, Sequences of Rigid Motions from Grade 8, Module 2. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Students describe a sequence of rigid motions that maps one figure onto another. The essential question for Lesson 10. For two given figures, describe a sequence of rigid motions that map one figure onto another. So far, we have seen how to sequence translations, sequence reflections, sequel translations and reflections, and sequence translations and rotations. Now we know about rotation, we can move geometric figures around the plane by sequencing a combination of translations, reflections, and rotations. Let's take a look at the ellipse in the coordinate plane below. We'll let translation 1 be a translation along vector v, which is right here from 1, 0 to negative 1, 1. Then we'll let rotation 2 be a 90 degree rotation around this point. And then we'll let re reflection 3 be a reflection across line L. Then we want to know where does that final image lie? So we've got a translation along vector V a rotation 90 degrees around negative 1, 1, and a reflection across line L. Which transformation do we perform first? The translation, the reflection, or the rotation? How do you know? And does it make a difference? Well, it does make a difference, as we've seen in previous lessons, the order in which you do the transformations. So we will need to do them in order. We'll do the translation, then the rotation, and then the reflection. Notice that I have extended the vector in a straight line. Then I will trace my ellipse. And I'll trace my vector. Then I will move my starting point to the ending point. And right here. And we'll call that E1. Next, we will do our rotation 90 degrees. So I've got my ellipse. I'm rotating 90 degrees. Positive is going to be in a counterclockwise. So I can make a grid here so I can see when I've gone 90 degrees. Put my pencil tip on the point around which we are rotating and rotate it 90 degrees. We'll call this E2. And our last transformation is a reflection across line L. So line L is right here. And I'm going to line up my ellipse. Sketch line L. I'm going to have to stop right there. I'm going to flip it over and line up line L with the original line L. And so my ellipse has moved from here to here. There we go. And here I have E3. So my sequence there. Again, I started out here and I translated it along the vector. Then I rotated it 90 degrees which is counterclockwise, and then I flipped it over or reflected it over the line L. And so here's our final image.
In the following picture, triangle ABC can be traced onto a transparency and mapped onto a triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Which basic rigid motion or sequence of would map one triangle onto the other? We see in this picture that if we reflected over this line that B and B prime would be the same point. C and C prime would be the same point. So the only point that we're actually having to move is point A. And if we reflect it over this segment, it will be the same distance from the line but in the other direction. So I can take my figure and reflect it over that line. And that will resu result in the new triangle. A prime, B prime, C prime. So we know that segment AB is the same length as segment A prime, B prime. And we know that segment AC will be the same length as A prime, C prime. And this segment is the same length. It has not moved. We know that angle AB is the same measure as A prime, B prime. And we know that angle A, C prime, or A, C, is the same measure as A prime, C prime, B. So we have got uh, congruent figures. We've mapped triangle A, B, C onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And we know that the angle measures are preserved and the line segment lengths are all preserved. And so the basic rigid motion that has moved one triangle onto the other is a reflection across segment BC. We are on number two. In the following picture, triangle ABC can be traced onto a transparency and mapped onto a triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Which basic rigid motion or sequence of would map one triangle onto the other? So I've got my triangle here, and if I do a translation, that will not work. And I'm noticing that B is on the same point, and if I rotate it, that I will end up in the right position. So the sequence, there is not a sequence, there is only one basic rigid motion for this one. And this will be a rotation around point B. Number three. In the following picture, triangle ABC can be traced onto a transparency and mapped onto a triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Which basic rigid motion or sequence of would map one triangle onto the other? So I go back over here and I notice that if I rotate it, that will not work. If I reflect it, that will work. But when you reflect it, you have to reflect it over a certain line. So then you think, what line should I reflect it over? If you reflect it over BC, it will not be in the right location. But if you reflect it over BC and then rotate it a bit, then it would be in the right location. So in order to move this triangle and map it over this triangle, you have to do two motions. So the first motion was to reflect it. And we reflect it over segment BC. And then once you've got it reflected over BC, then you rotate it around point B. D degrees until it's in the correct position. Number four. In the following picture, we have two pairs of triangles. In each pair, triangle ABC can be traced onto a transparency and mapped onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Which basic rigid motion or sequence of would map one triangle onto the other? So let's take a look at scenario one first. 
and we're moving this triangle over to this one. And I'm noticing the segment length here, AB, and here is the segment length, AB. So I'm thinking that I'm going to need to rotate this and translate it. And you think, does it matter what order I do that in? Well, let's see. If we rotate it first, and we're not exactly sure how much to rotate it. So what if we slid it first, and we move point A over to A prime, then rotate it along point A, and it would be in the right position. The two steps for this scenario are to first slide it along the vector. So we would need a vector A, A prime, and then we would rotate it around that point. So first, translate along vector A, A prime. And there's the vector that we just drew. And so that would take our triangle over here. And then we would rotate it around point A, D degrees until it was in the proper location. So step two, rotate. Rotate where? Around point A, D degrees. And scenario two. So I have A, B, and then here I have B, A. So I'm thinking this is going to be more than just a slide. Let's see, I'm going to end up needing to do, no, that's, that's a rotation and that's not going to work. So uh, maybe a reflection. So let's see if I reflect it first along BC. And then what if I slide it, move B to B prime. And then rotate it. All right, so that will work. So step one, reflect over BC. So notice how I've written the segment name, BC. Step two, translate. When you translate, you need to state what vector you're moving along. I'm going to move B to B prime. Translate along vector B, B prime. Notice how I label that. All right, so let's go over that. The first thing was to reflect. The second thing was to translate. And the third thing then is to rotate. And when you rotate, you need to specify what point you're rotating around. So I'm gonna rotate around point B until my triangle is in the right location. So step three is to rotate. What am I rotating around? I'm rotating around point B, D, degrees. In example five, let two figures, A, B, C, and A prime, B prime, C prime, be given so that the length of the curved segment A, C equals the length of the curved segment A prime, C prime. The measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle B prime. So these two angles are congruent. And the measure of, ang of segment AB right here is congruent to segment A prime B prime, which is also five units. Notice that these two segments are not the same length. With clarity and precision, Describe a sequence of rigid motions that would map figure ABC onto figure A prime, B prime, C prime. So I take my tracing paper and I've traced my figure. And I'm just going to experiment a little bit. I'm thinking, what if I rotated this a bit and then did a slide? And then a reflection along this segment. That looks like it would work. Okay, so let's take a look at what we just did here. The first thing that I did is I'm going to slide point B 
over to point B prime and a slide is called a translation and you need a vector. So I'm going to make a vector from B to B prime and my first step will be to translate a long vector B, B prime. Notice on my vector that I've used a starting point and an ending point and I've got an arrow indicating that it is a vector. All right, so I'm gonna slide that along All right, then the next thing is I need to rotate it a bit so that this segment AB lines up with segment A prime B prime. So I need to rotate it, but around which point do I rotate? I rotate around point B D degrees. So that's step two, rotate. Rotate around what point? B, how far? D degrees. And step three. So the last thing that I need to do is I need to reflect. And then I, what do I reflect over? Do I reflect over AB or BC or some other line? Well, I want this to be part of the, or, or part of the image. And so I wanna reflect over this line. So point A remains where it is, and point B remains where it is, and point C is going to move over here. So I reflect it over segment a, B, and now I have my image. So our third step was to reflect. When you reflect, you have to state what line you reflect over or across. So I'm going to reflect across segment A prime, B prime. And a segment just has a symbol with a line over it above it like that. The Lesson 10 Summary. In this lesson, we learned that we can now describe, using precise language, how to sequence rigid motions so that one figure maps onto another. Um, I would also like you to review all of the lesson summaries for Lessons 1 through 9 in preparation for your mid-module assessment, which will cover Lessons 1 through 10.